Whatever happened to the Undertaker Predator, Vincent Ambrosio, one of the old school T-Cap ones that said something that goes about like this? I wasn't gonna do anything. One of the OGs of the he wasn't gonna do nothing, but he showed up anyway. So, <laughs> what ended up happening to him? We're gonna find out. We're watching a channel called Criminality. It's supposed to go through what's happened to him, so let's figure it out. Let's figure it out together. His name is Vincent Ambrosio, also known as the Undertaker Predator. So they call him the Undertaker Predator because he showed up dressed like the Undertaker, like his hat and his, his like duster, like his big jacket on <laughs> oh, everything. Okay. What made him the most memorable Predator was the pathetic breakdown he had while being questioned by Hansen in an attempt to garner sympathy. I'm fat. I can't do anything. Look at way I, way I dress and stuff. Nobody, everybody thinks I'm weird. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how the internet works, though. Like, if you have your insecurities and the internet's always going to prey on them, right? Like, uh... I swear to God, even even if I, like, I make a video complaining about something or saying something, there's always comments be like, oh, yes, Ken's insecurities. Like, no matter like if you say something you're confident about, still it becomes the insecurity because you're talking about it. But uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he made fun of the way that he looks. And then the whole internet's like, oh, the Undertaker Predator. <laughs> Look at him. He looks funny. He's taking a run with it. Like, I, I made a joke about my hairline, you know? And uh, now I get comments talking about, like, Ken, you're going bald. You know? It's just just how it works <laughs> you know so yeah. i'm also extremely yeah. successful and very popular and everyone loves me but it usually, it usually only works on negative things but <laughs> I, we are super cool all right before vincent walked through the door that yeah, would change his life comes, forever, yeah. here are some of the things he wrote to the 12 year old decoy mm. vincent this is always like you walk we'll go through the episode and like you might start feeling sorry for him a little bit but then they show the the receipts and you're just like Phew. yes yeah all that goes out the window and then they then they all the guys like from the old episodes are like i was just talking it's just talk fantasy i wasn't gonna do nothing I'm just here. Yeah. Fantasy, like me showing up. The girl replied, 12, and you? Then Vincent replied, 19, what grade you in? The girl replied, seventh. Then Vincent asked, could I see a pic of you? Yeah, so it's just like, even just that mm. part right there, you're just like, mm, obviously you see where this is going. It's just like, mm, yeah. Mm, why do you need a picture of a seventh grader there, buddy? Fairfield, Connecticut police collaborated with former NBC News reporter Chris Hansen from <coughs> To Catch a Predator. Ten suspects were arrested as a result of the Fairfield sting operation. No, oh, that was a, that was a slow one then, I guess, because they had one where they had freaking like 24 dudes in two days. Yeah. Or something yeah, like for that. Real. They were they either had to like keep them moving because they were just coming so fast. There's like, God. Just, the next guy's on the way. Yeah, go, we got to get him out of here quick, quick. <laughs> According to investigators, the defendant's text communications were alarming and they defended working with Hansen. Mm -hmm. It's terrible what happened, Fairfield resident George Gallagher remarked. I'm surprised at the number of people who are involved. I'm Everyone... <laughs> That's the thing that's so shocking is how many people they catch. Yeah. Dude, you know, I go through and I'm like, man, you know, the, the, our To Catch a Predator series we do, uh, just covering these things is, is like, it's one of like the most viewed playlists that we have. Right. And I'm yeah. like, God, I'm going to, I'm going to run out of stuff eventually. Unfortunately, <laughs> that seems to be Ooh. very hard to do because we well, don't like Chris has got like a whole new show called Takedown where they're catching people have a freaking trailer. Uh, and then there's, <laughs> yeah. there's like, other channels where they're catching people like you know just i guess the, the vigilante version where they're just taking it into their own hands uh god there there's Chris just isn't gonna be able to retire dude yeah if he was a youtuber <laughs> and he was like oh man i'm gonna run out of no he won't which is the sad yeah. part it just that they're, they're sick enough to even be doing it to begin with and then they show up and then think they're gonna talk themselves out of it you know yeah. if you figure these guys would know that Chris Hansen's out there lurking. You know, he's out oh, yeah. there. He's waiting. And they, they, <laughs> they still take the chance anyway, and they know who he is now. Like, when they, like they see yeah. him in the, like the new stuff, they know who he is every time. Ambrosio made sexual remarks and shared photographs of his privates. Oh. When he walks in. Yeah, he comes in and he tries to choke slam her. Mm. She backs up, you know, he's coming with the old tube. <laughs> so he sent... I, I, I forgot that he, like, sent pictures of himself and stuff. Ugh. Ambrosio claims he knew somebody was going to show up, becoming increasingly distraught before telling Hansen his life story and attributing his demise to his long-term melancholy and Adderall misuse. Mm, yeah. Yeah, so he is like, oh man, I knew something was going to happen. Oh, poor me. Let me go. Ambrosio tells Hansen that despite residing in New York, he enjoys dressing like a cowboy and is well aware that it makes him look odd. 
Ambrosio grabs a knife from his pocket and tosses it into his hat, which he had. <laughs> I set- remember that. Yeah, he reaches back and <laughs> he's <just> like, "Whoa!" <laughs> whoa, whoa! On the table before, much to Hansen's shock. Hansen maintains half-heartedly that he had no pleasure in the interview. Ambrosio was arrested while begging the officer. <laughs> that's that's the thing. Like all the Chris Hansen videos, Chris Hansen hates these guys. Oh yeah. I mean, yeah, it is his claim to fame. So it's like it's not going to get typecast as an actor. Like Chris Hansen. He can't, he can't do normal interviews. If Chris Hansen's interviewing anyone, can you imagine him like interviewing an actor like seriously? Everyone will just think that actor's a pedophile, you know, immediately. Let's <laughs> talk. Have a seat. Like, yeah. oh, God. Like, oh, you know, Chris Hansen's interviewing Brad Pitt and everyone just goes, mm, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <No> what? <laughs> he put, just wishes he could do something. I'm sure like his, his, his thoughts he has when he's like, you know, his shower thoughts is him just like Superman punching these guys' face off when he's in there talking to him. Like, <laughs> Hansen adopts a much more solemn and compassionate tone when questioning him. This is to extract the maximum amount of information so that Vincent incriminates himself. That's another thing that he just said about um about the show is that they're they're there to interview and understand you know that's like the whole premise of the show to begin with right it was it was never about that the interview is literally to get them to incriminate themselves <laughs> absolutely it. it has nothing to do with the psychology <laughs> behind it he doesn't care about none of that <laughs> he's like yeah tell me you did it why you did it and you're going to jail you piece of crap some fans suspected hannah was actually vincent using a fake account since she first seems agreeable to the notion of her and vincent having a with a child although it is not Whoa. stated so okay so there's a whole thing where there's a third person involved they thought it was just him trying to like okay weird wow vincent was compulsive and threatened the decoy with numerous times when she refused to talk to him immediately. He oh, also phoned another decoy dressed one as of those guys. Old, which Hansen You don't talk to me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna off myself. Oh god, I better, oh. The manipulation tactic Manipulation of, yeah. 101, bro. Ah, dang. Oh, dang. Gross. In 2021, Hansen said on his podcast, Predators I've Caught, that the last time he heard from Vincent, he was in a halfway home, most mm. likely for and or the addiction therapy. <laughs> I like editing all this stuff so it's like the limited ad stuff. <laughs> let me go ahead and just let you know because uh, I know from experience if you do anything covering people getting arrested and, and especially to catch a predator you're getting limited ads. It's just happening. Okay? Period. <laughs> it's just <laughs> you're not getting the good ads. You know the, <laughs> ain't, ain't nobody making no money off this. Alright? <laughs> so you, you, don't, you don't have to freaking censor yourself because whatever unless you're trying not to get like age restricted I guess. Uh, by the way Become a member, support the channel today. Watch all the other videos, please, please, thank you. Remember, I'm very <laughs> cool. Tell all your friends, more subscribers, yay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, woe is me, Dane, you know, like one of our, our most popular series. It's like the, the worst one for like monetization. <laughs> I know, dude, why? <laughs> why can't it be just the, the TikTok reactions? Dang it. Ambrosio is still on the sex offender registry as of 2023. Ooh. However, since his release from prison, he's been up to a few things. More on this later. That's why we're here. I want to see what's going on. So right. he's still on the list. Yeah. Most of this episode has just been like a recap of the episode. While Vincent was in detention, his father called the decoy and threatened her with legal action until she told him where he was. The only way this was even possible to begin with is because Vincent had not yet communicated to his father that there was never a real 12-year-old <sighs> girl and that the entire thing was a sting operation. <sighs> Additionally, the decoy answered in character because the sting was still taking place. <laughs> so the, the dad called, where are you at, little girl? <laughs> Tell me where he is. I'm going to sue you. Like, sir, he was here to, <laughs> do you know why he was here to begin with? Right. Who, who is this? My name is Jenna. Who are you? Oh, my God. I got the phone call. All right. Is this Jenna? I'm Jenna. Who are you? I'm the police. Okay. He's the police. Now onto the court proceeding. <laughs> he, I'm the police. Like, ah. you are. I'm pretty sure that they're here. That's weird. <laughs> the court case starts out with Vincent's lawyer saying, he's been in and out of psychiatric hospitals. He's had extensive psychiatric treatment, different medication trials, and Dr. Walmer referenced that his that he's developmentally delayed for one, which I think contributed to some of this conduct. Oh, well, that's all you had to say. He's gay. He's free to go. You know? Yeah. Free. Oh, gotcha. I'm sorry. I didn't, I didn't know that you had, you know, you, 
You're, you're crazy. All right, well, yeah, please go out there and, and molest away. Go ahead. Vincent served part of his 10-year suspended sentence, but was eventually released back into society on January 29th, 2018. Okay. 2018, it was 10 years. Be like what they said, served two years of it. Now he's on probation. Yeah. People who have claimed to have seen Vincent since his release have updated everyone on his current whereabouts by saying, he works at a shop right where my buddy works at. Everybody there just mocks him relentlessly. <laughs> oh, <God>. ah. <laughs> that is unverified. Okay, unverified. But still, it's just like everyone's like, hey, it's you, the Undertaker. Yeah. He works as a car detailer at CAP Solutions, as well as a caregiver at Edward Bastone, and doing a part-time job as animal caretaker at Southern Duchess Equestrian. Ah, dang. We got three jobs? Is that what's going on? <laughs> or is that the Jeez. Or is that his resume of where he's worked before? He also eventually went back and got his GED, since, if you remember, he claimed he flunked out of high school. I don't remember that. He's out there working a job. He went back to and got his GED. And... Working three jobs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he was 19 when it happened, right? Yeah. Like, I don't know if he was. he's the youngest one that they've caught. Still illegal. You know, still like a 12-year-old, right? Uh, uh, and I feel like if anyone's got the the most potential to change i would hope it you know it's him because i mean i would hope so yeah dude i don't even know how long is this show filmed it's still in his 20s maybe about to turn 30 long life i mean hopefully a long life still ahead of him and hopefully it's changed for the better but uh okay so not a whole lot of information really of where he is that's why this episode is so much of a recap i got you right but he's out there and the, the main part that that i am the the biggest piece of information is that he is out and about again, you know, out in the world. Uh, yeah. Because they never, they never like serve the full time ever. It's always like, ah, oh, you know, 10 years. Well, you've been in there for one fourth of your time. Go, go ahead. Get out. You know, it's fine. Like you said, he's young. He was one of the younger guys. Hopefully he learned from all this and changed. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, I, you say that, like, uh, I, I keep thinking back to like, how the conversations actually went and like what he got in trouble for. Like he got in trouble for child pornography as well. So it's just like, Oh yeah. If he didn't get caught, it was probably going to continue and be bad. You know, like it was right. not going to get better. Anyway, let's know what you think about all that in the comments. Day's your birthday. Happy birthday. So my friends. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. I wasn't going to do anything.